Now that our faults and crater rim linear features are drawn in, we will move on to geologic contacts. In this video, we will use the edit tab and create features to draw in our geologic contacts. Geologic contacts are lines that separate geologic units on a map. We have already defined our different geologic units, and we are now ready to draw the boundaries between them. Let's start by drawing in the contact around SP Mountain. Here I will select the certain line. Before drawing in the SP Mountain contact, make sure that you have your chosen base map layer switched on and that you zoom into the 1 to 12,500 digitization scale. Like I did with linear features, I will again switch to the streaming function to draw my lines. Remember, to end your line segment while streaming, you must left click on the mouse. With the snapping function enabled, you can easily start and stop new lines to existing line segments. If you are wondering how I can draw such steady lines while streaming, it's actually because I am drawing them by hand using a Wacom tablet. Wacom tablets are creative pen displays that allow you to interact and draw on your computer using a wireless pen. I highly recommend these pen displays if you will be doing a lot of cartography. So even though Arc Pro software is all digital, you still get the satisfying feeling of hand drafting your map like humans have been doing for centuries. It is a good practice to merge multiple line segments that depict a continuous contact in case you need to change its attributes later on. First, we need to enable the select cursor. Then we can click and drag a selection box to highlight both line segments. Note how there is a continuous blue circle around SP Mountain now. Click on the merge icon to join these line segments into a single line. Next, let's draw in contacts for the other degraded volcanic vents. Remember, we only draw lines on a single base map layer, in this case, the 31545 hillshade. But we use all our data layers to help inform our mapping. Here, you see me switching between the hillshade and the Google Earth imagery to get a better sense of the feature that I'm mapping. In this case, I didn't like one of my original line segments. I don't want to delete the whole line, just part of it where I feel I map the feature inaccurately. This is where I will employ the split tool. First, select the line segment that you want to cut. You know that it is selected if it shows up light blue on the map. Then select the split tool. Use your cursor to select the part of the line that you want to split. Once you click, it will cut the line into two segments. Now you can select the unwanted line segment and delete it from the map. Again, it is good practice to merge line segments that comprise a single continuous contact line. A sometimes nifty tip for merging line segments quickly is to zoom out and enable the select tool. Click and hold the left mouse button to draw a selection box that grabs any line feature it overlays. Now, hold the shift key to be able to select and highlight multiple line segments. Once you have highlighted all the segments, click on the merge icon in the edit ribbon. If you want to enable or disable what features can be selectable on the map, click on this icon in the contents pane to toggle different features as selectable or non-selectable. And remember, be sure to save your edits and your project often while drawing in contacts. For geologic contact lines that don't form closed polygons on the map, these must be snapped to the map border or to a linear feature like a fault. Another helpful tip when drawing in contacts is to turn off all of your base map layers. This will allow you to see all of your line work progress so far. With the base map layers off, you can see if any of your line work is broken, missing, incomplete, or not properly snapped to the map border. It also makes it easier to see which line segments may still need to be merged with each other. Now I'll show you how to alter line attributes. 
we will use the example of the two lava flow lobes that spilled into the adjacent Graben structure. In the linear features video, we just drew this fault as a proximate. But in this particular scenario, we know that the lava flow is younger than the SP Graben and that it conceals the fault in two places. It is more appropriate to show the fault using the dotted concealed fault symbology. To remedy this, we must make some splits on the original fault approximate line and then change the fault line attributes to concealed. I mentioned earlier that it is possible to toggle which feature class layers are selectable versus non-selectable. I recommend that when doing these kinds of modifications to existing features, that you make sure that the only feature class layer in question is toggled as selectable. In other words, I will turn off the map border, contacts, and unit feature classes so that I'm unable to mistakenly select and alter those feature layers. With only linear features toggled as selectable, we can now make the necessary surgical cuts to fix our fault line symbology. First, select the fault, then use the split tool to cut the line in two spots. We now have three line segments. The segment above and below the lava flow will remain as a proximate. Select the small line segment in the middle and then click Attributes up top. The Attributes pane will pop up on the right hand side of the screen. Here we can see the Type field. Click on this icon to change the line attribute to Fault Concealed. Then repeat this process for the other lava flow lobe that conceals the fault. Now with the contacts for SP Mountain Cone, Lava Flow, and the degraded vents drawn in, all that is left is the contacts between the Kaibab limestone and the undifferentiated surficial deposits. Once you have drawn in all the geologic contacts, your line work should look something like this. In the next video, I will show you how to use the topology wizard tool to error check our line work.